Yo, what's good? So I've been seeing a lot of X242 um, posting things like that from the conference. And they're actually posting like the sermons and the worship sessions. And they were absolutely dope. Um, I'm in Germany still, so I was not able to attend. Bummer. But uh, I just wanted to go through some of the verse. Well, the verse uh, X242, because I feel like it is so potent and it's so practical for us as believers, and it's something that we can actually implement into our lives. So, yeah, let's pray real quick, and then we can get straight into it. So, dear Holy Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your love and your mercy, Father. Let your spirit reign on us tonight, and just develop us as we long and want to grow closer to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, okay, cool. So Acts 2.42. So the verse is, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. So in that already, we see three fundamental practices of believers, of Christians. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we see is devoted to the apostles' teachings, right? So the apostle teachings, or as we know it, the scriptures, right? So in Second Timothy, I almost said two Timothy. Second Timothy, uh, three sixteen says, "All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives." It is. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So scripture is important, right? Think about when you're in a relationship with somebody, you always want to get to know this person. You want to know how they walk, how they talk, what what are they icks, what are their red flags, what are things that makes them cringe, what are things that makes them happy. And the word of God, this book right here, is literally all those things with the Lord. What is the Lord's love languages? What is his ics? What is things that that he notices are red flags for us, right? Because the Lord doesn't have red flags. But what are things that we look at the scriptures and we're like, wow, I'm doing something wrong in my life. I need to change that. Or wow, he loves me that much. He cares about me that much that he did this, especially and then one um, tip that I, I I really stress that we as believers actually realize is that when we read scripture, it all points to Jesus. All scripture points to Jesus. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed and the New Testament is Jesus revealed. So when we're studying our Bible, when we're looking at scripture, find Jesus, right? Find Jesus. David and Goliath, find Jesus. Noah in the ark, find Jesus. Moses with the Hebrews, find Jesus. The three Hebrew boys, find Jesus in those situations. And then you can truly see the fullness of the text when we look for Jesus in these these beautiful uh, stories, right? And plus, once we realize like all this, the whole Bible is about Jesus that's who we try to compare our lives to. Don't try to compare your faith to David. Don't try to compare your faith to Moses. Don't try to compare your faith to Abraham. Because when you read scripture and you see, oh, that's Jesus in the text, the text also shows you how David, Moses, uh, Aaron, Noah, it also shows you how they fall. It also shows you their humanity, the mistakes they made. It also shows you the 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 dumb stuff they did the the evil things that they may have done the the where they fallen short right and it's i'm not saying that it's bad to compare yourself to people that fall short because we all fall short but when you put yourself in comparison to jesus we're always going to fall short and the standard the standard of life is to be more like jesus not to be more like david not to be more like joseph not to be more like moses right so when you you look for Jesus in the text, you have a correct evaluation. You'll make a better evaluation on your life 
like second Timothy's second Timothy shows it, it says it, it will make us realize what is wrong and what are things that we are doing wrong and it'll teach us the way to actually do it because once we see that it is Jesus in the text when we see that it's Jesus text and we compare how Jesus is living to how we are living we can see like oh I'm falling short in that area of prayer oh I'm falling short in that area of actually seeing people when they're um when they're going through something because Jesus always made it made a note of seeing people always made a note of caring for people always make a note for loving people so when we find Jesus in the text we can truly evaluate how we are living right and Jesus even tells us in John he says he says to the Pharisees or the Sadducees one of them he says you look into the scriptures to find eternal life but in them you find me, right? We don't look to the scriptures to find eternal life. We look to the, the scriptures to find Jesus. And in Jesus, we get eternal life, right? So after that, the next point that we see in the text of Acts 2.42 is the fellowship and, to, and sharing of meals, right? If you go a little bit further in the text, it says in Acts 2.46, they worshiped together and at the temple with each other, they met in homes for the Lord, their homes for the Lord's Supper, right? So these people were doing life with each other. The early church was doing life with each other. It even talks about in the early church how they would they would sell everything they had and bring the money to the to to each other so they can share and so they can help build each other's life right and this is just personally for me in my life the biggest things that have, have truly helped me was community it was always people uh stepping in and speaking over me or praying for me or just loving me right and i feel like as believers that is truly what we're called to do we're called to convict each other, to correct each other, to love each other, to build each other up, right? And and it's so weird. It could be so weird as believers when we don't show that love to each other, when we don't care for each other. Because when people see us, they're supposed to see, we're supposed to be the examples for, um, for Christ, right? We're supposed to be the people that when they see us, they see God, right? And if we're constantly in battle with each other if we're constantly hating on each other if we're constantly not supporting or building each other up why would somebody else try to come in to this to the body of christ right why would somebody want to join uh christianity or why would they want to join to be a believer in christ if we don't even love each other if we're constantly at battle with each other if we're constantly not showing love to each other right so community is so, so, so important, right? There is power in unity. There is power in community. And the body of Christ, we are built on community. We are built on unity with the sole purpose of making disciples and glorifying God, right? And the third one uh, is a super important one, right? Because people can take scripture out of context People can be fake. Be, people, community can end up being fake. But this one right here should really just be like personal, so personal. And it's something that I'm truly trying to grow into, right? Uh, the last one is and to prayer. The third fundamental practice that the early church used and the early church um, built their foundation on was prayer. And as believers, prayer is super, super, super important, right? So in Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So when we pray, when we pray, we bring all our cares, all our worries, all anything that makes us anxious, anything that is making us depressed. We bring it to the feet of Jesus, right? We bring it to the feet of Jesus. And even scripture tells us when we feel like we don't have the words to say, we have the Holy Spirit, right? We have the Holy Spirit that gives us what to say. It, it even speaks on our behalf to the Lord, right? And what is so already so cool is 
is that Jesus is literally sitting on the right hand of the Father, speaking on our behalf. He is speaking on our behalf. I'm going to do another episode on that. I'm going to do an episode on how Jesus is our great high priest. But he is literally sitting on the right hand of the Father, speaking on our behalf and interceding for us. He literally told uh, Peter the, that the enemy wanted to shift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. And that's in, oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus. Literally, that is what we are called to do as believers. We are supposed to pray for each other. Because we don't know the things that we're that we are going through. We don't know the things that other people are going through. And we gotta pray for each other. We gotta pray for ourselves, right? We gotta pray for our family, our friends, our workplaces, our our hobbies, our our communities, and things like that. It says the scripture tells us in, in Philippians 4 and 6, it tells us to pray for what we need. And it also tells us to thank him for all he done. Sometimes we'll go into prayer and we're just like, God, I, I need some money. I need this. I need uh, all this stuff is going on. But we just never say, God, you know what? Thank you. God, just thank you for what you've done. Thank you what you, you didn't do that I wanted you to do, God. Thank you for, for never leaving me. Thank you for always being there. For I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging for bread, God. Just thank you for being here. Thank you for being being loved thank you for for having your arms around us right and that's what we're called to do we are called to pray prayer is so powerful prayer is so powerful and i'm convicting myself right now because i pray but but am i praying without ceasing right and that's what we're called to do we are called to pray without ceasing the Lord wants to talk to us. And with all these three fundamental practices, thinking about, think about what when you're dating someone, right? You're dating somebody. And when you you're truly in love with someone, you you want to get to know them. You want to know everything about them, where they, they walk, the way that they talk, the way that they do things. And that's what scripture is. When you're in love with somebody, you even want to meet their friends. You even want to meet their parents. You want to know the people that they know. You want to be around the people that they are around so they can feel comfortable around you, right? Like you want to meet the sister. You want to meet the mom. You want to meet the dad. You want to meet the cousins. And that that's, that's, that's the fellowship of believers that we have. That's the community, right? And then the third thing is when you're dating, you just want to talk to that person. You want to you want to sit there and just let them speak to you. Matter of fact, exactly like you don't always want to be the one talking when you're with that person that you truly love. You don't even want to be that person that is just always chit chatting and just talking their ear off. But a lot of times you just want to sit there and hear what they got to say. Sit there in their presence. Sit there and absorb what they have for you and what they're speaking over you. And that's what prayer is. You're not just telling everything that you need to the Lord, but it's it's the Lord also speaking back to you, right? Because prayer isn't a one-way conversation. It, it, it It's a conversation. He speaks to you and you speak back. He speaks to you and you speak back. Some of y'all, y'all don't close your mouth when y'all pray. pray. Sometimes the Lord just be putting y'all on hold and be like, all right. No, I'm just playing. He hears all your prayers. But sometimes take a breath and just listen. Bask in his presence. Listen to his presence, right? And these are the three fundamental practices of the church, of us as believers. And these are three ways that we can truly get closer to the Father. These are three ways to to truly take our intimacy with the Father to another level, right? Uh, I love y'all. Let's pray out. And yeah, dear Holy Father, just thank you for your love and your mercy and your kindness, God. Father, we just pray that we we see you in the scriptures. God, we pray that we we understand the scriptures. We we look at the scriptures in context. We 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 
we not only know the scriptures for head knowledge, but we know it at, in our hearts, Father. God, we pray that we find community. We find we pray that we meet people that that show themselves and they they authentically be believers, Christians, God. And we just ask that we pray. We we learn to pray more. We learn to spend intimate time with you. And we learn to get closer to you, Father. And we just thank you for your scriptures. We just thank you for the time that we can. We thank you for your sacrifice. In your love and your mercy, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. See y'all next time.